Uh, so good morning, everybody. My name is Charles. I'm an educator with the Michigan Science Center. We call ourselves informal educators. Uh, if you guys haven't been, we're just up the road here. And uh, thank you. And then we have the one more item that we're going to place over there. Cool. OK, so uh, as an informal educator, I often find myself uh, uh, doing things that I never thought that I would be doing. And that uh, uh, usually comes true in the form of the different demonstrations that we perform. But very similar to a formal educator who might be teaching in a classroom, um, both of our missions is really to leave a lasting impression. That's perfect. Uh, to inspire, to inspire students to want to, oh, we used it as a trash can, that's okay. <laughs> uh, to, to inspire students to want to pursue careers in STEM or science, technology, uh, engineering, and math. We throw the arts in there sometimes as well. Now, what I've found as an educator is that um, when we're doing these types of demonstrations, the question that I'm almost always asked uh, is, what are you exploding today? So we don't always explode things. In fact, we do a lot of different hands-on experiments, too, where we might be making uh, potato batteries or, or lemon batteries and powering light bulbs. Or we're separating pigments through uh, chromatography experiments. Or maybe we're, um, maybe we're doing things like uh, learning about pH with acids and bases and natural pH indicators like cabbage juice. It's kind of cool stuff. Um, but as we're doing these types of things, um, it becomes true that maybe it's just too easy to blow things up. Um, I think that as an educator, I, I usually have to work harder than that. Um, so I actually brought a couple different demonstrations that I'd like to do for you guys, and of course, safety first. Um, so this is one of the things that we are always finding ourselves doing, and when I started at the Science Center, this was one of the first things that I learned how to do. Uh, this is a film canister, you might recognize that, or maybe not, uh, and it's filled <laughs> about halfway full with water, and I have an Alka-Seltzer tablet. So when we're doing these types of demonstrations, we're always trying to teach the fundamentals. And so we're learning about chemical reactions, and you know that when you drop Alka-Seltzer into water, it bubbles and it fizzes. We're creating a gas. So there's sodium bicarbonate and citric acid inside here. You can see already that it's bubbling away inside, creating a gas. And that gas, when we seal this off, is filling up the container so large that eventually we should end up with a nice explosion and keep an eye out. There you go. Oh, off someone's head. You can keep that though as a souvenir. So, so as we're traveling across the state, uh, I run the outreach program, uh, we get to visit libraries all across the state of Michigan. And we were in, in 2014, in the summer, we visited an Upper Peninsula library in Munising. And this was a one and done visit. We, we visited them, we did a program, and we took off. Well, in 2014, the program was all around combustion. Okay, so we caved a little bit and we decided to explode some things. But it tied right into the library's reading theme, which happened to be Fizz Boom Read. Okay, so doing these types of demonstrations really uh, uh, made the libraries happy and we got to do some things in libraries we never thought we would do. Um, but in 2015, we got to revisit this library. And it was interesting because we got to see kids who were there on a summer camp or maybe just vacation, came to the library and immediately recognized us and were asking us, what are you going to explode today? Well, in 2015, the, uh, the theme was superheroes. And so we did a superhero science program explaining the powers behind these superheroes. Uh, and unfortunately, it did not involve any explosions. But what I got to find out is that these kids remembered almost every detail of the ex experiments that we had done and performed for them one year prior. And so over and over and over again, we were seeing that these kids were remembering, that we were creating these flashbulb memories in these kids' minds, and they could recall all of the content that followed along with the demonstration itself. So I'd like to just show you another one of those demonstrations that we did. Um, this is what we call the carbide cannon. And so we have uh, a Gatorade bottle, and I'm going to add a little bit of our calcium carbide. And much like the first one, uh, we're starting to get some bubbles forming in the bottom of our container here. There's a little hole in the side here, all right? So we're, again, creating a chemical reaction. And um, I know what this looks like, but trust me, it's not. 
Uh, we're going to put in a little spark igniter. Now the acetylene that's being created is mixing with the oxygen and we should get a nice little explosion. So if you just bear with me here. There we go. So it became more and more clear to me that these types of demonstrations, these really simple demonstrations that we're doing are more and more essential. So I don't feel so bad about exploding things now. Um, but I am learning that more and more often teachers are surprised by the different demonstrations which, that we're doing, which is surprising to me because I think we ought to be empowering our teachers and training and preparing our teachers to be able to do spectacular science demonstrations like these every day in the classroom. Okay, maybe not that one every day, but fairly often so that we can, again, inspire these children to want to pursue uh, fields in STEM. So we have uh, a couple other things, a couple other resources. It's nice working for a science center when you have all these things at your disposal. I have uh, liquid nitrogen here. That's what I walked out with, not my coffee. Um, so I have liquid nitrogen here. This is 320 degrees below zero. So it's dangerous stuff, and it goes without saying that you probably should not try this at home. Uh, but I have a balloon here that I just filled up backstage, so we know that there's air inside there, or my breath, maybe a little more, bit more carbon dioxide. And when I pour the liquid nitrogen on top of this, uh, what's your prediction? The prediction of all the kids is it's gonna explode! <laughs> but in fact, the exact opposite happens. As we pour the liquid nitrogen on top of this container, or on top of our balloon here, the balloon begins to shrink. And so again, maybe it's not exploding things, but maybe it's doing something that is so mind-boggling that you never thought could be true that our balloon is now almost flat. So inside here, you may be able to see there is liquid air inside there. And as that air continues to warm back up, the balloon, once again, expands back to its normal shape. So you can imagine how mind-boggling that would be to a student who had never seen something like that before. So we have to think about our, our teachers and those teachers that inspired us. I have a couple that inspired me, my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. D'Angelo, and my uh, 12th grade teacher, uh, Mr. McGuire. Both did incredible science experiments in the classroom. So I'd like to show you one more uh, that we're definitely not going to try at home. In fact, we typically do this one outside, but we thought, why not try it today? <laughs> uh, we're going to do almost the opposite of what we did here, so instead of turning the gas into a liquid, we're going to pour some liquid into a container, seal that container, throw it into this garbage can, uh, and as that gas changes, as it changes back into a, uh, a gas, it's going to expand, and it's going to take up a lot more space. So you can imagine that as it expands, and much like our Alka-Seltzer rocket there, this one will be quite loud. And uh, I do encourage you all to uh, record this for insurance purposes. It's just like Gallagher. So, so this, will, this will be the end of, of, my, of my talk, and so I do want to say thank you. Uh, I, it will be quite loud, so those of you in the front row may want to cover your ears. Uh, we have no idea how loud it's going to echo throughout the building. But once again, thank you all very much for your time today, and uh, I hope this creates a flashbulb memory for you. <laughs>